Good morning, everyone. You're very welcome to our service here at Alconbury Independent Baptist Church. As you know, many of our churches have almost uh, entirely closed in this part of the United Kingdom. But we thank the Lord that we're here this morning to worship him on his day. And indeed, as we open this very short time of praise and worship, we pray your hearts will be encouraged, strengthened, edified and built up, and that you would know the presence of the Lord even through these trying and unprecedented times. I'm going to open with a word of prayer, then I'm going to read from Scripture. Uh, next week, God willing, we may have some hymns. Uh, we'll just see how that goes. But thank you for bearing with us and pray with us as we worship together. Let's bow our hearts and let's pray. Father, we're so thankful to be here in the presence of the Lord this very morning. We confess, O oh Lord, that these are strange and unprecedented times. But Lord, we're not fearful, we're not afraid, because our God is with us, and that to bless us. We know, O oh Lord, that thou art indeed still ruling over all the universe, and all that's happening in our world at this time is known to thee. Thou art gracious and loving and merciful, and thou art even with thy people. We pray, Lord, that thou wilt comfort each one today. Those who are uh, away from family and friends on this Mother's Day, Lord, draw near to them. We pray for those, O oh Lord, who are sick, unwell in our congregation and in our community. We ask, O oh Lord, whoever hears this message, that their hearts will be fed with the word of God and souls will be encouraged. We ask, O oh Father, hear our prayers in the Saviour's precious and holy name. Amen. Well, I'm going to read a reading from the book of Psalms. Our text this morning will be announced a little later, but we're in the book of Psalms. And I just want us to remind each and every one of us this morning that the Lord is still our rock. He is still our strength. He is still our shield. He is still our salvation. And I'm going to read from Psalm 18. Psalm 18. And read from verse 1 down to verse 9. Let us hear God's word to the chief musician, a psalm of David. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. The sorrows of hell compassed me about. The snares of death prevented me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations also of the hills moved and were shaken, because he was wroth. There went up a smoke out of his nostrils, and fire out of his mouth devoured his coals were kindled by it. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And friends, I want you to notice the Lord's servant David sings and says, repeats the truths that are precious to us at this time. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, not was, not will be, but he is. And my fortress, my shelter, and my deliverer, my God, my strength, 
in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation. So friends, this morning, as you're gathered in worship in your homes, remember these truths. The Lord is my strength. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my deliverer. He's my God. He's my strength. And he's my buckler or my shield and the horn or the strength of my salvation. Well, we're going to now pray for pastoral needs. Uh, There are needs in our own congregation. There are needs amongst our missionaries. And there are also needs, of course, in the wider community. And we're particularly going to remember this morning uh, friends in our congregation who are unwell, who are sick, who are housebound, who are shut in who maybe because of health reasons are maybe self-isolating. And we're also going to remember a particular little boy. His little boy's name is Royce. He's only a month old. He's a little baby boy born to one of our families. Uh, This family is very precious to us, and we're going to pray for them as well. Of course, we're going to pray for our country at this time and our community. So let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, thou art the rock of thy people. There is no God but thee. Thou art the strength, the help, the salvation, the shield of your of thy people this day. And we come, O Father, to the throne of grace, where we might find grace to help in time of need. And surely, Lord, our lands, many of our lands are in need this morning, in need of thy grace and thy presence. Surely, O Lord, thy people are in need this morning of thy comfort and thy mercy. Surely, O Lord, our nations need thy mercy this morning. Though, Lord, our nations are indeed have turned their back on thee, We plead, O Lord, that through this epidemic, that people would seek the face of God and they would find salvation in Jesus Christ alone. O Lord, we pray that in this time of uncertainty, this time of fear of the unknown, that people will be conscious that they're mortal, that indeed one day they will pass from this life. And we pray that many will have their hearts turned to thee, to seek the face of God, to repent of sin, and to trust in our wonderful, glorious, beautiful, gracious Saviour, Jesus Christ. We know, Lord, that thou art not surprised by what's happened over the last few months. Lord, we're not afraid as thy people because we know that God has everything in his hands. But Lord, we know too there are many who are fearful this morning and we pray that their fear would turn them to consider their never dying souls. As our beloved Savior said when he was on earth, what profiteth the man if he gains the whole world but loseth his own soul? For what can a man give in exchange for his soul? O Lord, thou art very great and very gracious. And thou art not willing that any should perish. But we pray this morning that many would seek the Savior, even over the weeks and months ahead. We bring to thee, O Lord, those in our congregation who are suffering who are isolated, who are lonely, who are needing a touch from God. Oh God, come and minister to them at this time. May they know thy presence, thy grace, and thy love. We pray, O Lord, for those particular in our congregation who have asked us to pray for them, for those going through long-term treatment, for those who are going through... um, cancer treatment and those who are going through um, 
treatment for various illnesses. We pray particularly for the family, O Lord, on our hearts. We pray for little baby Royce. We ask, O Lord, that thou wilt be with joy and Smyrna and the whole family at this time. Lord, we know this little baby is a gift from thee. And we know, Lord, that we have rejoiced as a church to welcome this family and this little baby into our midst. And so we pray this morning, draw near to uh, mom and dad and the, ch- and the other children, but also particular, Lord, put thy hand of healing upon this little baby. Thou art the God who is called Jehovah Rophi. I am the Lord that healeth thee. So, Lord, it has been recorded for us in the book of Exodus. And so we plead the name of God this morning. We plead the power of God to energize and to even strengthen this little baby boy. And we pray, Lord, give the doctors and the pediatricians wisdom in diagnosis and in treatment. We pray, O Lord, that the family would know thy comfort in these troubled times. And we pray for others, Lord, who have asked us to pray for them, for Debbie Barker and for others, Lord, who have, have need um, to have appointments, emergency appointments this week. Lord, thou dost know them, and we know, Lord, that thou wilt keep them. Father, we pray for our countries at this time. Lord, in the Western world and even in India, Lord, there are people who are suffering, people who are, who are dying And there are doctors and nurses who need strength and they need supernatural strength to get through this crisis. But Lord, we pray in it all that thou would prove thy glory and thy grace and be merciful to thy people. Lord, we don't deserve mercy. We don't deserve forgiveness because of our sin. But we know that grace isn't be given us because we deserve it. Grace is unmerited favor to those who are undeserving And do not merit it. O Lord we pray. Be with us now. Draw near to us. As we turn to thy word in a few moments. Speak to our hearts. Encourage our souls. We ask for Jesus sake. All these prayers. Amen. Well friends. If you turn with me. Just a little further on. In the book of Psalms. To Psalm 46. And this is our Bible reading this morning. Our Bible reading this morning is Psalm 46. And as you're turning there, I want us to be conscious that the Lord in these times is our refuge and he's our remedy for these times of uncertainty and these times of panic. So Psalm 46, I'm going to read the whole psalm. To the chief musician... For the sons of Korah, a song upon Alamoth. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, Though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Salah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that Right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. 
I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Salah. The word Salah means pause, meditate, think upon what you've just read. Before we come to the message, let's bow our heads in a word of brief prayer. Lord, thou art God. Thou art our refuge, our shelter, our sovereign, our security, and our salvation. There is, O Lord, throughout the scriptures, the teaching that God is the refuge of his people in times of trial. And so we pray that thy spirit would come this morning and open the word to us and speak to us. Many, Lord, are fearful and uncertain of the future, but, Lord, we pray for a, a calming word. We pray that these rock-solid truths would encourage our souls. We pray that the Spirit would come, and as the psalmist says, that open thou mine eyes that I may be see wondrous things out of thy law. Lord, thy word is inspired, infallible, inerrant, and all-sufficient. And when thy Spirit comes upon the word, whether there be many or few gathered, Lord, thy spirit can be at work and will be at work. And we pray for blessing this morning. We pray for the presence of the Lord. And we pray the grace of God will be known to all. Speak to us now through this message, through this ministry we plead. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, in Psalm 46, we'll come to that in a moment, but we are reliving in unprecedented, unpredictable, and uncertain times. And I wonder, over the last few weeks and months, as we have observed the spread of this coronavirus called COVID-19, as the people of God, where have we turned? Perhaps we've listened maybe too much to the media. When I want us this morning to turn from the media to the word of God. I want us to consider together truths that will help us in these difficult days. We have seen the best of humanity and the worst of humanity. We have had reports of people panic buying as if there's not only a epidemic in the land but there is no tomorrow and I wonder friends when we go to the supermarkets and we see these empty shelves do we consider that that's because people are terrified they're fearful they're unsure of their future they don't have faith in the Lord they don't have salvation they don't have real hope all the the entertainments all the structures, all the supports that they had have been taken away from them. And now, friends, as God's people, we can tell these people that we have a God who knows all things. Friends, I'm not afraid of what's happening at the moment. I'm fearful for those who don't know my God. And I trust that as we study the word together, that you and I would learn some rock-solid truths, some foundational truths that will help us through this crisis because, God willing, we'll come out the other side. We'll all be back together in the Lord's house here at Alconbury in Huntingdon in the UK, but we'll be um, gathering with our own congregations wherever we normally meet, and that'll be such a blessed day. So as we turn to Psalm 46, I want us to think about the 
bad, good side I've mentioned is a bad side of humanity. It's a good side. We've seen the sacrifice of our healthcare workers, both in the United Kingdom and other parts of the world. We have seen the generosity of communities that have set up groups and social media. Social media can be good sometimes for supporting those in need, the elderly, the infirm, the, the shut-ins, those who can't get out. And we've also seen the sacrifice of even some of those who recently just returned to the health services to help as they had been retired, but now they've returned to help in this crisis. There has been two earthquakes this week, one in the Mariana Islands in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. But then there's been another earthquake over there in Salt Lake, in outside Salt Lake City in Utah in the United States. And we've also known of pestilence and the locust swarms taking over the Horn of Africa. And what would God want us to think this morning? Where would he want us to turn to? Who would he want us to turn to? Our God has given us his word, the Holy Bible. And we believe it's true from the very first word to the last word in the Bible. And we believe that God's word is relevant for today as it is throughout history. And God has a word for us this morning, I trust. And this was laid on my heart, and I trust it will be an encouragement to you. So as we study the word together for these few moments, I trust that you will pray with me and plead with the Lord to speak to your heart and to encourage you and I and all God's people through these trials. I want us to turn to the word of God and as we turn, I know the God of the word will speak to us. God's remedy for uncertainty. God's remedy for times of uncertainty. Let's take three rock solid truths. But before that, I want us to notice the heading to the chief musician for the sons of Korah, a song upon Alamoth. You know, friends, that is part of the original scriptures. This is what God's Holy Spirit had written down. God oversaw all that was written in the word of God. And the congregation here is encouraged to sing. And the sons of Korah were, who are they? Well, they were the choir masters or the choir directors. They were a, a people who were very gifted in singing and hymn composition. And they were the people who composed this psalm. And the word salah, it's used three times in this psalm. And so what I've done is I've divided up the psalm as the Holy Spirit would want me to divide it up. So after the word Salah, we're going to pause. Now, what does Salah mean? It means to stop, to think, to ponder what we have just read. If you like, it could be meditation, to think upon what we've just read. So what's the first rock-solid truth we're going to consider this morning? Look at verses 1 to 3. God is our refuge and strength, the very present help in trouble. Now first, under this heading, God is our refuge. What is a refuge, friends? A refuge is a shelter. It's a place we go to when we are fearful or uncertain. Perhaps we have known what it's like to be out in a terrible thunderstorm. And to be facing the elements and we find a little shed or a little barn in the middle of the countryside and we take shelter there. I know I've had that experience before. This shelter speaks of hope and trust. It, it, when we're, what does a shelter provide? It, like think of your house. It, it provides shelter from the wind, uh, from the rain, from snow from storms, and even it can be a shade from the sun. And in the scriptures, we're given texts that 
speak of God being a shelter. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. Friends, a shelter speaks of safety. And God is our shelter. And as we think about this first word, refuge, I want us to think of a a bird, maybe a little robin that visits your garden. And one day you look outside and you see a sparrow hawk. And you know that the little robin is very afraid of the sparrow hawk. But the little robin seeks shelter. Maybe in your greenhouse or in your shed and you have the heart to push him out. Well, there's a story told of a man who watched a sparrow hawk pursuing a little bird. And this man had a great coat. And as this little bird was fleeing from the hawk, so the little bird found himself wrapped up in the cloak in the coat of this gentleman. And the, little, and the little bird took refuge there. And the man looked down and he said very gently, he said, I will not kill you nor betray you to your enemy, seeing you have fled to me for sanctuary. And I wonder, friends, when you think about God being your shelter, how can God be my shelter? Well, Christ came into the world, friends, So that our souls, though they be hunted by all manner of fierce hawks of temptation and sin and uncertainty and fear, we can find safe refuge in him. The second thing I want us to look at under this heading of shelter, God is our shelter. The first was refuge. The second is strength. Do you know, friends, God is all powerful. There is no limit to God's power. God's all-knowing and all-seeing, but this morning we're going to concentrate on his power. Yes, we might imagine God being powerless in the face of this epidemic, but he's not, friend. He's very aware of all that's happening. And in fact, he's strengthening his people through these times. The word L here is the word for strength. It means boldness. It means to be mighty. When trials and difficulties come and we feel as if all of our strength is drained from us. Yet at these times, God will be our strength. God will give us power. This little baby who's unwell as we prayed for earlier in our service. God will give that little babe strength. Maybe you're weak this morning. Maybe you're struggling with the whole issue and you're overwhelmed by the information, remember this, friend. God is our strength. God is our strength. Indeed, we could um, remember a hymn written by Martin Luther, the great reformer, when he said, A safe stronghold, our God is still our shield and our defender. So that we've looked at God being our refuge And then we looked at God is our strength. And the third word I want you to notice is God is our help. Our help, friends. That means comfort. That means assistance. You see, God provides refuge and strength to his people. And God will help us. That's what these hymn writers are telling us. That's what these men of God are saying. That's what David says. And the men of God and women throughout the scriptures, God is is our help. What's more, he doesn't do it from a distance. Do you notice the qualification word here? A very present help in trouble. What trouble are you facing, friend? What difficulty are you facing? If you're a Christian, if you love the Lord, if you know that you've been saved by the grace of God, God will be your help and God will be present to you. I love that word. He's present there with us. He's not, as it were, distant from us. It's not as if we had, could try to get into a rocket and travel all the way into to Mars. And that's where we'd find help. No, friends, we find help here, right where we are. 
As the psalmist in Psalm 27 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Psalm 27 and verse 1. And God was with the psalmist David, even in the midst of his trial. And God will be our help. He'll be our strength. Oh, let me put it this way. I'll maybe it's lightened it a little. God does not do social distancing. God is near us. He's imminent to us. Now, I'm encouraging friends who need to, to do social distancing, but God doesn't do it, friend. He's there with you in this situation. Let me tell a story of one of my heroes of the faith. Do you know, children, you're listening in and you're saying, well, this is all about God. I want to share with you, we should have a hero of the faith. Choose one over the next few weeks and read a book, an autobiography or a biography about one of those heroes. Here's one of mine. His name was Hudson Taylor. He was a man of God. He was from the north of England. He loved the Lord. He trained as a medic. And he first went to China in a sailing vessel. Imagine that. That the only way they could get to China was by depending on the wind. And very close to a set of islands where there were fierce people living, the ship was becalmed. In other words, there's now no wind. And the, and the ship is sitting there and drifting closer and closer to the shoreline. There were these fierce people, these savages, standing on the beach, waiting for the ship to run aground on the shore, and then they would be attacked. They would attack them. The captain of the ship, who doesn't seem to have been a believer, but he went to Mr. Taylor because he knew Mr. Taylor was a Christian, and he said, Oh, pray for us, Mr. Taylor. Pray that our sails would catch a breeze before we're grounded on the shore. Taylor said, Only if you set the sails to catch the breeze. The captain thought, I am not going to make myself a laughing stock in the midst of a calm with all these sailors around me. They'll laugh at me. But Taylor said, I will not undertake to pray to my God until you get the sails ready. And it was done. The captain took Mr. Taylor at his word. And while Mr. Taylor was engaged in deep prayer, praying that God would send a wind, he was totally unconscious of what was happening outside. He was in communion with his God. And uh, suddenly at the door, there was a loud knock. <coughs> Mr. Taylor, are you still praying? Mr. Taylor said, who is there? He said, it's the captain. Are you still praying for that wind? He said, yes, Mr. Taylor said, yes. The captain said, well, you'd better stop praying, for we have more wind than we can manage now. You see, friends, Hudson Taylor believed that God was his help, his strength, and his refuge. And we must do the same in these times of uncertainty, we can look to the Lord. Do you know, friends, I shared this on Wednesday night with our prayer in our prayer meeting, but I want to just remind you, God did not give us a spirit of fear or of power, of, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Paul wrote that in the last epistle that he ever wrote in 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7. God doesn't give us a spirit of fear or Romans 8 and verses 38 to 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things to present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus.
Oh, my friends, God is our shelter amidst the crisis. God is with us through the uncertainty. He's our refuge, our strength, and our help. Is he your strength, your refuge, and your help? Do you belong to the Lord this morning? Have you trusted in the Lord Jesus as your Savior? Well, if you haven't, friend, pause. Because that's what our psalm says in verse 3. Let me read verses 2 and 3. Therefore not, will we not fear, though the earth be removed, though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. This is cataclysmic, catastrophic events in the world. It speaks of the earth being removed. That literally means it's been shaken to the core. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, and we know that's happened in history as well. There have been islands that have appeared overnight, and there are other places that are, have disappeared. But the Lord says, and God's people will echo, the Lord is my strength, the Lord is my refuge, and the Lord is my help. So we've seen firstly that God is our shelter. The second thing, and It'll be briefer is God is our security. God is our security. And look at me in verses 4 to 7. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. The heathen raged, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Salah. And think with me, friends, just for a few moments of these pictures that the Lord gives us in his word. These men of God were very conscious that the Lord was with them. And there is a river. And I wonder, friends, have you ever seen the parallelism? In a moment we'll see the parallelism in verse 5, but the parallelism throughout Scripture, rivers speak of happiness, abundance, peace, joy. Even through this crisis, rivers seem to be replenished and fish seem to be appearing in places they haven't been seen for years. But the rivers here are the rivers of God, friends. And this is a picture of blessing, of God's grace and God's love and God's mercy. In Isaiah 33 and verse 21, the Bible says, But there the majestic Lord will be for us, a place of broad rivers and streams. In Isaiah 41 and verse 18, God promises, I will open the rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. In Psalm 101 and verse 3, God says, he describes the believer, the godly man or the godly woman, as one who will be refreshed by rivers of living water. And who does this river of water, God promises to give it to those who seek him by faith. Jesus Christ, when he was at a, a well at Sychar in John chapter 4, met a woman and he promised her rivers of living water. There's rivers of God available to the people of God. Rivers of peace and joy amidst the uncertainty. But then there's another picture here in verse 4. The city of God. The city of God. And of course, the psalmist here is speaking, singing of the Jerusalem, the holy city of God. In another psalm, in Psalm 48 and verse 1, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God in his holy mountain. Jerusalem today is not the city it was. And if you go to Jerusalem today, it's a city like every other city in the world. But even in the Lord's day, when Jesus Christ was on earth, it was still a city like every other city. But one day, this city of God, the city of God, the holy Jerusalem, will come and, in, and be on the earth. The city of God speaks of this place of designing and building and purchasing and indwelling of God's people. A city is full of people. 
Now, at the moment, of course, during this crisis, our cities may become deserted for a time. But cities are known for activity and for interaction. And indeed, this is a picture of the city of God that is promised in the Bible. There's one other thing I want you to notice. Not only the rivers of God, but secondly, the city of God. And thirdly, the presence of God. Friends, where is God in all of this? Where is God amidst the crisis? God is present. In verse 5, God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. She sh- he, God shall help her, and that right early. God shall help her, friend. God shall strengthen her. God can enable her. There's one interesting thing about Jerusalem. And if you ever go to Jerusalem, you'll discover this for yourself. Jerusalem is one of the few cities of the world that does not have a river flowing through it. There may be the river Jordan, of course, is north of it, but it doesn't go right through it. And I wonder, friends, did you ever think that this city of Jerusalem, this city of God, this holy city that's been promised in the Bible is going to be a holy place, a holy place. You see, for the godly in the Old Testament, the city of God, Jerusalem, was the place where God's worship was conducted, where sacrifices were offered as a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. But friends, there's something else I want you to notice. And this is the rock-solid truth I want us to take to our hearts. Where is God amidst the trial? Where is God amidst the struggle? The context of this psalm is most likely referring to the invasion, the imminent invasion of Sennacherib of the city of Jerusalem in the book of Isaiah. And we'll read that in a moment. But I want you to be sure of this, friend. These people were convinced that God wasn't distant from them. He was in the midst of them. In the scriptures, we're told that in Joel 2 and verse 27, Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God. Or in Zephaniah 3 and verse 15, The Lord is in your midst. Or in John chapter 1 and verse 14, in The word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. What does that word dwelt mean? It means, friend, tabernacled dwelt lived abided and if you're a christian this morning you can be sure that god is in the midst of us that's a challenge for our home situation when we're going to be home with our families over the next while or for a prolonged period that'll be a challenge but to remember that god is in the midst that's been convicting to me friend he god sees everything all the time but to be sure that god sees everything that we do and say even in private in our private homes so it might be a challenge but it's also an encouragement god is in the midst well we've seen firstly god is our shelter amidst the uncertainty secondly we've seen god is our security amidst the uncertainty and thirdly and finally god is our sovereign amidst this uncertainty look at verse 8 to 11 and we'll be very brief come behold the works of the lord what desolations he hath made in the earth he maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth he breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder he burneth the chariot in the fire be still and know that i am god i will be exalted among the heathen i will be exalted in The earth, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Oh, my friends, what a wonderful encouragement that is in these days. You see the invitation here, first of all. Come, come, come and see. There was a man called Nathaniel who heard from one of his friends that Jesus Christ was in the area and the invitation was come and see come and see and that's what we're doing here come and see behold what do we come and see we behold the works of God the works of God friends look at these things 
The first thing is that God's work, verse 8, come and behold the works of God. What are these works, friends? Well, what desolations. Behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. I wonder, friends, do you realize that God is still in control of the world, even amidst this crisis? He knows this virus is occurring. He knew that this virus would come. He didn't cause it, but he has allowed it. But what's his purpose? Maybe that we will behold his works. Maybe we behold his works of creation and his works of mercy. God has a great purpose in all of this. And I wonder, friend, have you ever heard of another hero of mine called John G. Payton? And his wife served as missionaries for many years in the New Hebrides Islands. That's not Scotland. That's down near Australia. And one night, hostile natives surrounded his mission headquarters, intent on burning it down. But John Payton and his wife prayed continually during that terror-filled night that God would deliver them when daylight came. They were amazed to see the attackers gradually leave. A year later, the chief of the tribe became a Christian. Isn't that wonderful? The testimony of John and his wife and his family had such an impact upon this man who had grown up in superstition and fear and false religion. And he asked Peyton, Do you know what happened the night that we came to attack you? And Peyton said, No. The chief replied, But who were all those men that were with you? The missionary answered, puzzled. There were no men there, just my wife and I. But the chief wasn't going to be thrown off. He said, but who were the men, these many men standing guard? Hundreds of big men in shining garments with drawn swords in their hands. They seemed to circle the mission station. So we were terrified of them. Only then did John Payton realize that God has sent his angels to protect them. You see, friends, the Lord is sovereign over all the earth, the armies of heaven. He's called the Lord of hosts. A little further down in verse 7, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Well, that's the first work. The second work is God's worship. In verses 10 and 11, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. What does it mean to be still? Well, literally it means to cause to fall or to let go. And what does it mean to know? To know in your heart and your inner soul. To know deep down, not just in your mind, but in your heart. Not just intellectually, but experientially and experimentally that the Lord is with you. One modern preacher puts it like this. Here we have a twin command. Do not panic. Trust God. Or as Spurgeon puts it, here is the command and here is the reason that we should obey it. Be still and know that I am God. That's lovely, friends, to remember that. Here's a word for the type of person who maybe this morning fearful. Maybe you needed that word. Be still. Stop. Be calm. God is with us. Here's a verse for the struggling Christian. Be still and know that I am God. Here is a verse for the doubting Christian. Be still and know that I am God. Here is a verse for the hurried Christian. Be still and know that I am God. Here is a verse for the wayward Christian. Be still and know that I am God. Here is a verse for the overactive Christian. Be still and know that I am God. Here is a verse for the backsliding Christian. Be still and know that I am God. Here is a verse for the young Christian. Be still and know that I 
am God. Here is a verse for the youngest Christian listening this morning. Be still and know that I am God. Let me tell you another story, and we're almost done, but I was very conscious of the children this week and all the concerns they can have. And I want to share this with you, children. There was a little girl. She had lost her mummy and daddy. And she was talking to a grown-up. Her mummy and daddy loved the Lord. And this little girl loved the Lord Jesus too. And as the little girl was being questioned by this grown-up, the grown-up said, What do you do without a mother to whom to tell all your troubles? She replied, My mother told me before she died to go to the Lord Jesus. She said that he had always been our friend and that if I go to him, he would always be my friend. But, said the questioner, she was a skeptic. She said, but he's a great way off and he's so busy. He has so much to do. He cannot attend to you. The little girl looked at this woman with a smile and said, I don't know how much he has to do, but he has said he would take care of me. And I believe he will. And the last work that we have considered this morning is salvation. God's work, uh, God's works are his, and his worship and his salvation. Are we worshipping the Lord this morning? Well, the only grounds on which we can worship the Lord is by knowing God's Son as our beloved Savior. Do you know him, friend? Do you, have you been saved? Maybe during this time, there's little ones and they're concerned and they're worried about the future. Dear friend, dear little one, if you know Jesus as your savior, if you've entrusted your life to him, then there's nothing to fear. Maybe there's someone listening in and they're not sure whether they're a Christian. Well, let me share this with your friend. I want you, first of all, to acknowledge there is the only one and true God. Secondly, I want you to admit That you have failed this God in your life, in the way you've acted, in lying and cheating and deceiving and being unkind to others. They are all an expression of the sin within your heart, the sin within your life. And so, friend, what I'll say to you is seek the Lord. Yes, acknowledge there is a God, but admit you've sinned before this God. The third thing is repent of your sin. Trust in Jesus Christ this morning. God sent his son into the world to save people like you and me. Oh, friends, will you seek him? Will you seek him today? And if you trust in the Lord Jesus, do let us know and we'll pray for you. We'll pray for you both now, today, and we'll pray for you during the week. Maybe you're a little one and you're saying, but God is so busy. Why would he be interested in me? Let me put it this way. Just because Ah, somebody very important is very busy and we think they're not interested in us. God is not like that. God is interested in every single one of those, younger or older, who seek, who's seeking him and seeking for salvation. You see, Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, as the Apostle Paul said, of whom I am chief. And the Apostle Paul said, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. So friends, what have we learned this morning? We've learned three things. We've learned that God is our shelter amidst the crisis. We've learned that God is our security amidst the crisis. And finally, we've learned God is is our salvation or our sovereign amidst the crisis. And so, as we conclude, let me close with a word of prayer. We'll be praying for you and we'll be thinking of you. And God willing, we'll join you again on Wednesday night. Take care and the Lord bless you. Let's pray. Father, we're so thankful for this morning. We're thankful for this time together. We're thankful, O Lord, in these times of uncertainty that God is our shelter. 
God is our security and God is our sovereign. God is our saviour. God will keep us. The Lord Jesus Christ is ours. The Lord Jesus Christ will sustain us and help us. The Holy Spirit will encourage us and direct us and help us to study the word. Bless us now, we pray. Go with us into the day. We ask, hear our prayers, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.